All right. So what what happened after um, Intel came up with microprocessors? Uh, they noticed lots of people building circuits like this, and so uh, they came up with the idea of a microcontroller. And we're all, we're all familiar with microcontrollers now, but that was a, a new idea. Where you're going to add some of these functionalities actually into the uh, chip itself. So you might have um, a little bit of RAM, some I.O., um, and then you could just have basically one chip plus a um, a program, uh, a, a, an EEPROM someplace. So the uh, 8031 was kind of the first uh, venture into that. Um, this is an 80C31, so uh, this has a, a 83 copyright on it. So 1983, it's only a couple of years after this board, so quite quickly they came out with microcontrollers. So a lot of people started using microcontrollers and um, then they said, well, if we have a, a large volume and we're going to run the same thing over and over again, we don't want an external ROM because these were kind of expensive and we had to burn these and everything. So they came up with the 80, uh, 50 ones and the 50 ones had built-in ROM and uh, you could get programmable ROM, I think it was one-time programmable, or you could get a mask ROM. The mask ROMs were cheaper, but you had to order a lot of them because Intel was going to actually uh, fabricate that um, ROM for you specifically. And I was familiar with that because we used to, back, back when I was an engineer, um, we, we built products that, that used Intel parts and um, we would have them build uh, coded coded parts for us, 8051 based parts. Um, later on we uh, wanted some more functionality and other people had started to build microprocessors, so Zilog came along and NEC came along, other people came along. Um, in the microcontroller uh, arena uh, one of the really nice parts that came along was from Oki Semiconductor, a Japanese company and um, they had an 8051 that had even more functionality to it. It was quite a, quite a nice part. And we would get those parts custom made for us with, with, our, uh, with our code in it. But you needed a way to develop that code. So if it's a, a masked ROM, how do you actually develop the code? Well, they would, they would, they would give these to you, or uh, I think they gave these to us, but I suppose you could buy them also. Um, I think at the time, the only way to get these, though, was to be an actual um, user of their parts, and then they would, they would give these to you, and you would use them uh, for development purposes. And what it is, is that it's, it's their version of the 8051. Uh, this is an 85C154, so the 154 chip was, was, was their fancy uh, 51 chip. And um, they took the internal chip and they wire bonded out the area of ROM and they put it onto a socket on top of the part. So this is a ceramic package and then there's a uh, an actual um, socket on top. Now I put a, an extra socket on top because uh, these were very hard to get a hold of. So I put a sacrificial socket on top. So if I screwed anything up, I could just replace the socket. So um, it was a, uh, a way for me to not screw up the part. So anyway, that's why there's a pot socket on the, on the top. And I would always do the same thing for the bottom. So there's a sacrificial uh, socket on the bottom also. Um, but you could develop your code. You could, you could, you could then uh, burn, uh, burn an EEPROM. Um, and plug it on top and then this is the standalone microcontroller um, and then once you got your code all up and working and to your satisfaction and then you would send the hex file uh, to Oki Semiconductor and then they would uh, burn burn that in create a masked ROM and um, send you parts and so when you receive the parts they would already have your your program in them so these are kind of cool little parts um, I've actually seen this for sale on eBay uh, like 20 bucks or something, which I thought was a pretty good deal. Uh, I mean, nobody's programming in this anymore. Everybody's doing Arduinos and stuff, um, either ST, either ST or Atmel. Um, anyway, um, kind of a bit of history. Uh, I found this in the in the junk drawer the other day, and I went, "Oh yeah, I remember those." Uh, so, microcontrollers. <laughs>